Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. In today's lesson I'm going to be using an accounts receivable status report and demonstrate how we can use the sum if and the new sum ifs functions to calculate the amount that's currently past due and the amount that will be due in a future period, for example, next month. Now, some ifs were introduced in Excel 2007. Let's take a look over here at our accounts receivable status report. Notice that in this cell, B3, I've used the today function to return the current date. I have a field over here called status. In status, I use a formula to discover which invoices are past due, which are payable in the future. So in this case, I'm going to look for the cell for an invoice in the due date field and subtract today. If it's a positive number, it's not yet due. Today is March 25th. This invoice is due 25 days from today. On the other hand, this invoice was due on February 28th, which is 25 days earlier than today. So it's 25 days past due. Now, before we go any further, let's see how we've used the simple sum function to total up our accounts receivable. Now we want to ask questions. Give me the number of days past due and then give me the amount that is past due. For this we use the sum if function. The sum if function has two required and one optional argument. So the first required argument is to look inside a range. Now notice that I've used a name for this range. I've called this status. My best practice is to always use name ranges inside your formulas. They're easier to create and using name ranges makes it easier to explain your formula to someone. So we want to look inside the name range status for cells that match this criteria. They're negative. In other words, they're less than zero. So the operator is less than zero and notice that it's included inside double quotation marks. Now remember our first question was total up the number of days. So in this case we don't need that third optional argument. In this case, when we want to find the amount, we want to use that third argument. So once again, we're going to look inside this name range status for cells that match this criteria. They're negative. They're less than zero included inside double quotation marks. When we find the negative values in status, then we want to get a sum from this field, from the amount field. Now let's come over here and take a look at another use of sum if. In this case, our question is, tell me the amount of the invoices that will be due after April 1st. So in this case, we're going to look in a different field. We're going to look inside this named range, the due date field, the criteria that we want to match. Let's examine this. You know how in the previous example we used double quotation marks to surround the operator. So our operator is greater than or equal to. Now we're using the ampersand to connect the operator to a function called date. The date function has three required arguments. The year, 2011, the month, 4 for April, and the day, 1 for the first day of April in the year 2007. We want to look inside due date for invoices that are greater than or equal to this date. When we find them, then we want to use the third argument to sum the amount. Now, what if we wanted to ask another question? What if we wanted to find the total for invoices where we have a positive number? In other words, they're not yet due, but they're earlier than April 1st. In this case, we need to use the new sum ifs function. So sum ifs is plural, equals sum ifs. You notice that it has an s. Now this was introduced in Excel 2007. In this case the function argument syntax is different. What we want to produce is a total of the amount. So I want to sum this range. I'll use the F3 keyboard shortcut to bring up the paste names dialog box. Select amount. Now, when I look at the arguments, notice that the arguments in sum ifs are in pairs. So I have criteria range 1 and then the criteria 
for that range. So the first criteria that I want to look for, I want to look inside status. So in this case, I want to say status, and I'll again use F3, select status, and the criteria will be that it's a positive number. In other words, it's greater than zero. So my operator is greater than zero. And notice that Excel, when I use the function arguments dialog box, automatically supplies the double quotation marks. Now, my second pair of arguments will be criteria range 2 and the criteria. In this case, the field that I want to look in is due date. Once again, I use F3, select due date as the name of that range and the criteria. I want to surround my operator in double quotation marks. So double quotation marks less than double quotation marks. I want to use the ampersand to connect the operator to the function, the date function. The date function has three arguments. 2011 will be the year, comma, 4 will be 4 equals April and 1 equals the first day of April. Now when I click OK, my result is 3,649. So when I look inside the status for a positive number, then return the amount for those dates that are positive. Now let's hide this column and let's bring up another section of our data sheet which will have uh, some different examples of some ifs. Again, remember some ifs began in Excel 2007. So I've used some ifs to first return the number of days that are past due by branch. So my criteria in a range will be inside the branch looking for in the status numbers that are negative. Now let's take a look over here specifically at the amount. So what I want to do, and I'll again use the function arguments dialog box, is sum up this range, the amount, when this first pair of arguments, the status field is less than zero, in other words it's past due, then give me the result in the amount for the division range where it's equal to this cell reference. So let's create this from scratch. What I did is I first created copies of the individual branches for the division, Alpha, Beta, Better Computers, and Computer Depot. So I'm going to use equals some ifs. And again, make sure you select some ifs and not some. Let's use Control A for the keyboard shortcut. So I want to get the amount. I want to sum the range, which is in the amount field, when my first pair of arguments for the criteria is I want past due invoices. So status, that's an easy one to type, and notice that I get the intermediate result, is going to be less than zero operator less than zero, it automatically supplies double quotation marks. And now the criteria that I'm looking for is I'm looking inside this range division. So F3, select division, click OK, and then I want to say that is equal to this value. This value is the branch for alpha beta. So I only have the amount that's past due for the alpha beta branch. Now that's easy to just copy down. And there you go. And of course then I can use the sum function to get a total for the amount that is past due. And that amount that's past due is right there separated out by division using the new sum ifs function. So there you've seen how you can use sum if and the new sum ifs functions to evaluate your accounts receivable status report. Typical of the video lessons that I offer on my DVD, the 50 best tips for Excel 2007. And I'll look for you in the next lesson.